Hello, Captains. This is the Doctor. Welcome back to more Let's Play Star Trek Online. This is my free-to-play character, Rami Summers, currently doing this free-to-play playthrough of Star Trek Online. Haven't spent a dime yet in the game. That's the whole goal here. I'm playing the free-to-play version, and I want to see, you know, how we can develop a character and what gear we can get and how we can make a successful build of a character and ship and enjoy the game without having to actually spend any money or resources or large resources. The only thing I'm doing is spending time in the game, which means, of course, grinding, but you spend time and you can build up the economy of the game that it provides to get that gear and so forth. One of the things I'm doing right now is working in the reputation system as much as I can off screen. So this is something that you guys don't see, but off screen what I'm doing is I'm doing STFs now with Rami Summers to get marks to do the reputation system. And there's a few of them that I'm working on now for a specific reason. Um, one of them is the Borg reputation for with Omega marks bring up the reputation I'll show you where I'm at task force Omega as it's called so I've been doing some Borg STFs to get some marks now as far as videos go I will show you some Borg STFs after we finish all the storyline missions with Rami Summers I will go in and we'll do a whole slew of videos on all the STFs you know for these reputations and so forth so I plan to do that I just want to do that after we finish all the storyline missions. I want to get through the storyline of the game first and we still have, you know, so several missions to go through with the Iconian War and then Future Proof. But, in the meantime, I do need to keep building up these reputations because they take a long time to get through all the tiers so that you can actually buy the gear you want and then it takes a lot of marks and the special item to purchase that gear so it takes a lot of time to get to that end point to begin with so I figured I better start now because if I waited till the end of the game then uh, it would just take that much longer so I've started working on it now while I while I'm playing the game that just makes more sense so what I've what I've gotten up to is I've got tier one of task force Omega unlocked now and I almost have tier two unlocked now the reason why I'm going for Task Force Omega is specifically for two items. Number one, the Universal Borg Console, and number two, the Kinetic Cutting Beam. That Those two things together are going to benefit our ship, and I already have one of those things on our ship. Well, let me show you here. I now have, because this is unlocked at Tier 1 of Task Force Omega, this is the Universal Console Assimilated Module. It is Mark 12. It is very rare. You get that from the reputation, from the Tier 1 Task Force Omega reputation. Now, there are a couple of reasons why I want this console on the ship. Number one, it adds critical chance and critical severity to our damage, as you can see. Ups our critical chance, ups our critical severity. Very important for a tactical character to up both of those. You want to not only have a high chance to do critical damage, but you also want to do a lot of critical damage when you do critical damage. So those are very important, increasingly uh, more important in today's Star Trek Online than past Star Trek Online. In uh, other things that this does here is it adds some weapon power, it improves passive hull regeneration, and it improves control effects and resistance to the same. And here's the other reason to why I want this. There is a two-piece bonus associated with this called the Omega Weapon Amplifier. And it's a two and a half chance to apply the Omega Weapon Amplifier and you get plus 10 current weapon power plus 500 current weapon power resistance rating, and plus 500 maximum weapon power resistance rating. All of that, with the two and a half chance doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually happens more than you think it does. And it will help add more damage to our ship. So all I need for this is either the plasma torpedo launcher or the cutting beam. And I'm gonna go with the cutting beam because in the rear of my ship, in the aft weapon slots here, uh, you guys made some great suggestions for what I should put in here, and you guys are right. The kinetic cutting beam is one of the things I should have back here because it is a 360 degree beam, so no matter where my ship is, is, is positioned, it will fire. That means it will help add to forward firepower or forward fire DPS. 
And with that two-piece bonus combined with this console, it gives that Omega weapon amplifier as well. The other things I'm going to put in the rear that I don't have yet are going to be two Tetrion 360-degree beams. One will be from a mission reward, I believe, and the other you can actually purchase in the exchange, but it is too expensive for me at the current moment. But in the future, I will try to get that. So those will be some upgrades. So I do now have the Borg console, and I'm just waiting to get the Borg cutting beam now as I continue to grind the reputation. So that is Task Force Omega, so I'm just continuing that, and once we get the Kinetic Cutting Beam, which I believe is at Tier 2, I just need to get enough marks, I'm not, I don't have near enough marks right now, I think I need like 750 for it or something like that, so I need to do a lot of grinding just to get that. The other reputations we're working on is I've, I'm continuing to do the Delta Alliance, still working up onto Tier 5. Once I get to Tier 5 of the Delta Alliance unlocked, I will get a reward of marks, and that will actually be enough for me to purchase the final piece to my ground set. So my ground set is going to be the Delta Alliance ground set. I've already got the shield, and I already have the compression phaser rifle. I just need the body armor. And that's the last piece, so that is opened up at Tier 5 of the Delta Alliance. I just have to wait for that. The other thing, other reputation I'm working on, is the Iconian reputation. And I'm actually up to, uh, into Tier 3 now. We're almost, uh, maybe this next one, I'll have Tier 3 unlocked. And the reason why I have... Uh, the reason why I have the Iconian Resistance going is because I want the space set, the entire, all four pieces. I want the warp core, the shield, the impulse engine, and the deflector. I want all four pieces because for a tactical character with an escort, that's going to allow me to do a lot of DPS. That's going to make me very powerful as a starship. And, uh, and of course I can upgrade that as, I, as I'm able to. But that is the set I'm going for, is the Iconian set on this ship that we're using, which is going to just meld really nicely with it. As you can see, I could purchase the deflector right now. It's unlocked currently. I can go ahead and get the deflector part. Unfortunately, I can't because it requires uh, 750 Iconian marks, and I don't have enough Iconian marks. It'll also eat up most of my dilithium when I do that. So those are some things I have to keep in mind. I'm probably going to wait and do and get the kinetic cutting beam first because that's also going to eat up a lot of my dilithium, the kinetic cutting beam. It'll eat up dilithium, marks, energy credits, and the uh, neural things, whatever you have to get. So that's going to eat up a lot of my resources right there when I get the kinetic cutting beam. So I just kind of slotted this just to show you that I could get the deflector if I had enough resources right now, but I don't. I need a whole bunch more marks and dilithium in order to do that. Not to mention the other three pieces to the set that will be coming as I unlock more tiers. They're going to equally require a lot of marks and dilithium. So I've got a lot of work ahead of me still if I actually want to purchase these items. See, it's one thing to unlock all the tiers in the reputation, but it's an entirely different thing to actually buy the gear that you unlock in the reputation because that in itself has a high, high, high cost. So just that's why I wanted to start this, this work now on these STFs and get these reputations going because if I waited till we finished all the missions, it would just be uh, it would just take forever to do it so better to start now as early as you can working on those things that you need so that stuff is just going it'll just it'll just uh, every day I try to log in and you know keep that going all right let's get to the next mission though that's what we're here for is the Iconian war is where we are we've done uneasy allies we've met the uh, heralds for the first time there or a herald and uh, found out that the Iconians were massing a, f a huge fleet in a Dyson Sphere in the Andromeda Galaxy and then they jumped it all the way to Iconia. In Blood of Ancients they've started their campaign and they started with new Romulus of all planets so we um, had to defend that and we I guess we did 
Uh, then we found out they were re they were after some preserver technology or wanted to keep us away from some preserver technology. So they blew up the preserver planet, and that archive is now gone. And now it's time for the next mission. This is Delta Flight, and Cop Captain Tom Paris has requested our help for a joint mission with his task force, Delta Flight. Report to the Sol System for your mission briefing. Captain Tom Paris has requested your ship for a joint mission with his task force. I won't lie to you. We're not making much headway against the Iconian so far. You and your crew have proven to be capable of fighting them. Delta Flight is one of the only other teams to do so. Together, perhaps you can start to turn the tide. Okay. Report to the Cal Bryden system. Captain Paris and his team are waiting for you there. All right. We're going to help him. We're going to get a specialization qualification to make a pilot bridge officer. Of course, we don't have a... Or do we have a ship that has a pilot? I need to check on that. And then the uh, a console here or a neutronium alloy. And I think we'll go for this unique console, the Polaric Modulator. Does the Xiphius have a pilot station? No, it is an intelligence station. Interesting. I would have thought the Xiphius escort would have had a pilot station being an escort, but I guess they went with intelligence. I mean, am I correct on that, or am I just... Or does it allow any type of seating? Is it a universal seating? Wait a minute. No, it's a... It's a... No, I think it is only intelligence. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think you can put because it says it's a it's a universal slot in the sense that you can put any career type, but it is an intelligence station only. So I can't put a pilot station on here. Oh well. Let's go to the Cal Bryden system and do a thing with Captain Paris, Tom Paris. Go to the USS Burn. Oh, that's way up here. So, while that's going on, the other thing that I am continuing to do as we uh, are you know, just working on our character, is I am continuing to do the Admiralty system off-screen. So right now, I am level, or Rami Summers, is level 10 in the United Federation of Planets campaign. We got our extra two marks already, and I think I probably already applied those. Um, I did the whole, you know, tour of duty thing already to get two extra marks. Now I'm working on the Klingon Empire, and I, the reason why I started with the Klingon Empire instead of the Romulan one first is because the reward on this one is 30,000 dilithium when you finish the tour of duty on it. So we can definitely benefit from that, that dilithium. We're going to need it, in fact, to buy all that reputation gear. I mean, 30,000 won't even really buy one piece. You still need a little bit more than that, like 32,000, but it'll help a lot. So as I work on this Admiralty one here, I can, you know, do the tour of duty and eventually get 30,000 dilithium by the end of that. Then I'll work on the Romulan reputation one. The reward for that is a universal tech upgrade, which will certainly help. But right now I need dilithium more than I need that. Because I've got a lot of reputation purchases ahead of me to do. The thing that I haven't been doing much of because it actually does eat a lot of energy credits is the duty officer system um, I am not even I'm only rank one in diplomatic and I would rather be you know max rank in diplomatic that'll open up more things for us but I have found that doing a lot of the diplomatic DOF missions actually utilize or uses up energy credits and I don't have a lot of energy credits to begin with. I'm down now to 136,000. So if I did a lot of DOF missions, it would it could clear me out on energy credits. So I haven't been doing a lot simply because of that. Like here's one here. 
but see it requires 50,000 energy credits so if I do a lot of these it's just going to eat all my energy credits up so that's why I haven't been doing the DOF system but the Admiral Admiralty system has definitely been much more rewarding so anyway it's just something I want to make sure I've got all my traits that I can enable enabled here yep no more skills I don't think I have any specialization points I can spend yet uh, working on tier 3 of the pilot specialization so I hope to you know completely max out the pilot specialization that'll help us and that's where we are now we're almost to the system and we can begin Delta flight Yeah, I like the Xyphius Escort. I will, of course, do a review on it on my main account once I get it equipped and, you know, do it do it justice on that side. I will do a video on it. I like it. It's a nice Escort, especially one that I got basically for free. Um, not bad at all. Delta Flight. You are cleared for transport. Okay. And uh, here we go. Sir, we'll be monitoring the system for Herald patrols while you're in the briefing. The transporter room will be standing by to return you to ship immediately if you enter sensor range. All right, good. Where? Welcome to the USS Byrne. It's Moral Paris. Normally, I'm the security chief and second officer on the USS Kirk. But she took heavy damage during the battle in the Lena system. Until she gets out of dry dock, I and many of the crew accepted temporary postings to other ships. I wasn't expecting to get a request to join my father's task force, but Delta Flight is doing some good. I want to help. We've both come a long way since the regular system, haven't we? I wasn't sure if I was getting out of that business with Bavat in one piece, but... I'm sorry I haven't gotten the chance to thank you for your help until now. Thank you. Now back to the war. It's time to stop some Iconians. Hmm. It'll be good to work with you. I'm looking forward to it too. I don't know what crazy scheme my father's cooked up this time, but the more off the wall his ideas are, the more they seem to work. With you on the team, I'm sure we'll complete this mission. But let me know if you need me to translate. Dad has this habit of talking in phrases that went out of style 400 years ago. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, we gotta talk to everybody, so let's start right here. I'm Kana Jinnis, the team scout. No one's better than I am at finding trouble. And believe me, I've found plenty. I uh, borrowed my first shuttle off a landing pad when I was 10. I didn't think I'd ever have a chance to join Starfleet. But luckily, people like Captain Paris can see the person behind the incident reports. Now I have a chance to make a difference. It's good to get a chance to know everyone on the team before the action starts. It's bad enough fighting the Heralds. We don't need any interpersonal conflicts muddying the waters. You can count on me, sir. And I know I can count on you. You okay? Jolan True. Do you understand ancient earth humor? Paris, the older one, keeps asking me if I am two weeks from retirement. Is that supposed to be humorous? Mm, not as far as I know. I thought so. Look, when things get messy out there, and they will, stick with the team and keep your head down. If we work together, we might just get out of this in one piece. Most of us, anyway. He's had a rough life. Ferex. Hello there. I'm Ferex, and I'm a... Well, I don't have a specialization like most of the others. But Captain Paris calls me the cook. I don't know why. I could burn water. But it seems to amuse him for some reason. I'm a traitor and blockade runner. Any place where there's conflict, there's usually a few good deals to be made. I wasn't too sure about leaving the Delta Quadrant. Knowing the territory is a good part of staying alive, you know. But Tom convinced me. And except for all the Heralds trying to kill us, it's not too bad so far. 
Hmm, good to have you on the team. You know, one of the things I've enjoyed the most about coming here is the opportunity to get to know people from other cultures. Klingons, Romulans, humans, Andorians, Betazoids. So many different and intriguing species. Say, after this mission, how about we grab a drink and I can tell you about the third time I left Benth in custody and then broke through a fourth defense line to recover the lost chalice of Zizilma. Um, let's see how this mission goes before we make any future plans. Uh, <laughs> geez. Okay. Andrew Weston, all-around genius. Don't let the lack of pips on my collar fool you. I'm just as good as anyone from Starfleet. Better even, because I don't let the rules get in my way. I spent some time at the Academy, but I left when I realized Starfleet wasn't for me. We're all stayed. Always wondered if things would have been different for us if she'd had the courage to walk away when I did. Now, given the history of my character I'm playing, Rami Summers, and the personality I've built around her, she is a bit of a disciplinarian. Um, I think that she would, in this case, say some of us find discipline and dedication important because she is, that is how she is. She is very dedicated, disciplined. She rose to this position she's in in a very honorable way and has done the work to get there. So yeah, this one right here for sure. Sure. Kirk reprograms the Kobayashi Maru and he's a legend. I take a creative approach to alter my grade on the Astrometrics final and I get tossed out on my ear. Starfleet needs to loosen up a bit if you ask me. And that time I spent in New Zealand? Yeah. I did everything they accused me of, and then I did my time. Like I said, I don't like rules. And yet you volunteered for a war mission. Just because I'm not as stiff doesn't mean I don't want to help win the war. My main focus is computers, specifically encryption algorithms. I've been studying the Iconian tech, and I think I've made some inroads into the fractals they're using for... <laughs> you know what? The details don't matter. When it comes to taking out Iconian security protocols, I'm the man for the job. Hmm, the chain of command is there for a reason. Keep your focus on your job. And the Klingon. Warrior, join with us and stab at the heart of the Iconians. We will either be victorious or we race towards Stovacor. Today is a good day. Huh. Kapla. I am the team's weapons expert. Most weapons on ships are too puny. I make them strong. Have you ever wondered what would happen if you loaded five quantum torpedoes into one casing? <laughs> you have to reinforce the tubes, but the result is most satisfying. Okay. Can we try that then? Let's send one of those to the Heralds. Thanks for coming. Nice to see you again, especially after what happened at New Romulus and Lanus. As you well know, the war is not going too well. Delta Flight is one of the ways we're trying to change that. We're a cross-faction team picked for our abilities, not our politics. Now the Alliance needs us to handle an important mission. I hate putting your crew at risk too, but we're gonna need you on this one. What do you need? Oh, not much. We're just going to slip into a heavily guarded system that the Iconians already control, avoid detection and probable destruction, steal a Solonay device that could give them a beachhead in our dimension, and escape with our lives. Sound like fun? Sounds great. Let's do this thing. So this used to be Calbriden 3. Intelligence believes that the Iconians destroyed the planet to gather materials for a subspace disruption device. We think they intend to use this device to open a door for their Solonay forces to enter our space. A whole new fleet for the Iconians? We can't let that happen. Exactly. But the planetary debris has created an asteroid field, and the mineral content of those asteroids will shield us from the Iconian sensor arrays. I've plotted a course for us, but we'll still need to watch for the Herald patrols. The station with the device is in the center of the debris. Weston will override their computers while we run interference. Once the station shields are down, we'll eliminate it and the device with extreme prejudice. 
Is that another reference from that ancient program about impossible missions you like to watch? Uh, something like that. The Alliance doesn't have a fleet to send against this station. We're it. If we can't do it, no one can. So, no pressure. I hope you're all ready to do the best flying you've ever done, because that's what we're going to need to complete this mission. Let's head them up and move them out. Dismissed. Okay. Sounds like fun. Let's stop the uh, Solene. Standing by to transport you back to the uh, White Star. Let's go. Transport me directly to the bridge. And warp away. I like how the I'm rubble so, in our way used so to be far the planet known as Calbriden 3. Uninhabited, luckily. But they had high amounts of topoline, uridium, and boronite. When the boronite and uridium are combined and exposed to an electrical charge, they create spatially inverted tetrions. Lots of spatially inverted tetrions. That's why the Heralds are here, to create a pocket of our space where the Solanae can survive. From there, they'll expand, and what's good for the Solanae is fairly terrible for us. Okay. The Heralds have set up a security beacon at the entrance to this system. We'll need to disable it before we can attempt to slip through this asteroid field. Setting course for the security perimeter satellite. Yeah, like I said, I'm so far in front of everybody. Guess I'm the leader. Don't know why Captain Paris isn't the leader, but oh well. Okay, Weston. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to take down this security grid. We only have a limited amount of time before a patrol comes by and finds us. How can we help, Mr. Mission Impossible? Weston? I need help inputting the proper subspace frequencies as I use my deflector dish to cycle through the possibilities. You'll need to match the alpha, beta, and gamma bands. With my subroutine scrambler, that should be enough to break through their security. Match the subspace frequencies in the alpha, beta, and gamma bands. I'm ready. Start the sequence. Seven matched. Five matched. Three matched. We've Excuse. done it! Hurry! The security perimeter won't stay down for long! Okay, here's the good news. The topoline and the planetary debris will hide us from the Herald sensors. Now keep the larger deposits between your ship and the Iconian station. If you stray too far off the path, they'll find us. So keep moving and stay in formation. If you encounter any patrols, take them out as quickly as you can. We need to get in position before the Heralds know we're here. Um, keep moving and, avo and avoid or destroy the Heralds. I can do that. How would you rate your piloting abilities? Now, how do they know that Topoline will mess up the uh, Iconian sensors or not let them be able to detect us? How do they know that? Um, okay, well, I can say uh, I pilot my own shuttle sometimes. Easy. I'm a fairly average pilot. Normal. Or we can go with the hard one. My piloting skills may even rival your own. Hey, I... I am. I got pretty good skil skittles. I like skittles sometimes. I, I don't know. I kind of prefer M and M's actually, but every now and then I can eat a skittle. Let's see if my skills are hard. Am I hard? Let's find out. Bringing up your navigational HUD now. Let's see how hard. Try to I can stick be. to the path I've outlined. Oh yeah, that's the stuff right there. Pretty, pretty easy, actually. The mineral content of the asteroids will shield us from the Herald sensors. Try to stay in formation with the rest of the squadron. You stay in formation. You're the one who needs to keep up with me. I'm awesome. Let's kick the tires and light the fires. Yep. I'm not sure what that means. Is it some kind of alpha quadrant thing? Even though Kinda. I have no tires. I'll explain it later, Ferrex. Fire your proton packs, kids. The next turn is a tight one. Yep, that's what she said. Easy enough for a talented, handsome pilot like myself. 
Everyone's mom tells them they're handsome, Ferex. Friendly fire! Ow, I'm wounded. Fewer asteroids through here. More chances of being spotted. Race you! Torpedoes loaded We're and ready! Sensors show that this asteroid is mostly hollow. If we blow through where the rock is thinnest, we can slip through without being detected. Ready to fire. Fire in the hole! You don't think that'll get their attention? Well, what was that? It just kind of disappeared. Oh, they want me to quickly get there. Five, four, uh oh, three, two, one. No, we're not gonna make it. Shoot! This reminds me of flying. That was. That was. They don't like it when you do that. Yeah. Uh, wait. Who let Ferrex fly inside the SD? Weston? No comment. They did not give me enough time once blowing the thing open to, uh... Let's get going. Stick close to the path on your HUD, or the Herald's... I'm ready. They did not make that easy, folks, getting from blowing the chunks to, uh, getting through the next hoop. They did not give me enough time. I needed to have started immediately. I didn't know that. Fasten your seatbelts. It's gonna be a bumpy night. Ha! <laughs> I've flown through worse in the Badlands. Whoa, Morale! Watch the paint job there, Tiger! Don't be a rear seat pilot! I think you mean backseat driver. But we're flying! Uh, sir. Harold oh. Patrol up ahead. Take them out before they can warn the others. Right through the hole. That's how you do that. I'm jamming their outgoing transmissions. Class. Shields are down. We're taking on boarding parties. Damn it! Hang on, we're all. I'm bringing a team over to help. Take out those arrows. Not bad, we huh? We need backup over here. Get a team and get over to Morale's ship. Okay, transporting over. Whew, that was some pretty uh, good flying. I just... My team and the Burns crew have cleared most of the boarding parties, but there are still heralds trying to get to the bridge and more pinning me down near the armory. Head toward me. If we can team up, we can make a push towards the bridge. As I was saying, I enjoyed the uh, that flying there and the tight timing you had to get between the rings was very cool um, I am a little disappointed that I missed that one after blowing the asteroid apart I didn't realize I needed to really kick it into gear right after that happened in order to make the next one they put it so far apart from where you are so you you better you know punch it immediately or you're gonna miss that one on the hard setting I didn't know that so I do now Tom Paris, what are you doing hiding in here? Fell back here to grab some phaser rifles and got bottled up by those heralds. Thanks for the help. That was easy. You could have taken them. What's the, the situation? The bridge crew has sealed off the bridge and locked the ship's computers down, but the heralds aren't giving up. All of the remaining boarding parties are moving toward the bridge. If we don't get there before the heralds break through, they'll slaughter everyone there and set the ship to self-destruct. What's the plan? Now that you and your team are here, we can clear out the remaining heralds. Get to a turbo lift and head to the bridge. Lock and load, everybody. It's time to save the day. Let's ride. <laughs> Today I'm feeling um, 
feeling pretty good. <laughs> so, uh, so Rami Summers is gonna say, "Let's ride." Wait a minute, don't I need to like bring that shield down or something? Where are they going? I also don't know if I forgot to mention, I think I might have, I did go and do the Uneasy Allies mission, or whatever it was, to get the, to get the set on Eliza Flores, so I have the Romulan Imperial Navy Combat Armor on her, and the Romulan Imperial Navy Personal Shield, and I also gave her the Plasma Repeater Pistol as well. You guys reminded me, and thank you very much, the Plasma Repeater Pistol is not part of the set. Uh, you actually have to use the kit from that mission as part of the three-piece bonus. And of course you cannot put kits on your bridge officers, so she will not get the three-piece bonus from this. She's just getting the two-piece bonus. So the two-piece bonus is not even showing up here. Two-piece bonus is... Dang, it's not even—it's not showing me what the bonus is. I, sometimes there's that bug where it doesn't show you. The, the, it should be called... It doesn't even tell you what the name of it is. Well, anyway, she's getting a two-piece bonus from these two pieces here, but not the three-piece bonus. That's all. And then I went ahead and put the weapon on her anyway, just so that she had... It feels like a complete thing, because it was from the same mission. So there she is with the weapon. So she's got a pretty good set on her. And I think I upgraded somebody else, not her. Navro has the Kobali set. It's Vamat Assume I want to work on next because I really want to get him the Jim Hadar set since he's a Jim Hadar. I would like him to have that. Anyway, just wanted to let y'all know I I did get that Imperial Navy set, but I put it on. I put it on Eliza Flores. Morale! Welcome to the party. You could use a little help. Ooh, that defiler went down fast. I think that's the last of them. What's our status? All other ships are secure. Your ship is damaged and you have crew in sick bay, Morale. I don't want any unnecessary casualties. I have great respect for your abilities, but if this is some sort of Klingon, glory-seeking, never-give-up, today-is-a-good-day-to-die kind of thing... Uh, remain silent. <laughs> Everyone on this ship knew the risks when we started this mission, including me. The boarding parties are gone, and we need to keep moving. We have to get to the station and finish our mission before we run into any more Herald patrols. Can your ship continue? As much as I hate to say it, you're right. If we live through this... Your mom is going to be so proud, but she's going to think I was an idiot for trying to hold you back. That's if we live. What do we need to do to get your ship back up and running? I'd like to help as well. What can we do? I know a few of Andrew's tricks. Use one of his encrypted override codes to lock the Heralds out of our computer so they couldn't take control of the ship. I could use some extra hands to get these systems restored. Good job on the computers, Moral, but... But Andrew? Did he teach you anything else that got him sent to a penal colony? Can't that wait until later, Captain? We need to get the barn back on the burn. I said barn. We need to get the barn back online, Captain. <laughs> Let's get this barn together. Corral the animals. Why am I having to do these tasks? Don't they have a bridge crew? Don't they have any crew? I know some were damaged, but not all. That does it. Let's both get back to our ships and finish this. Yeah, uh, that's what we came here for. Let's do the thing. Let's do the thing we came here for. Sounds like a plan.
and server not responding. It's good to see that old my old friend back, my nemesis SNR. Come on. You can do it. I have faith. A full 30 seconds of server not responding. Really? 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 35 seconds? Wow. The Heralds are going to notice one of their patrols is missing. Let's move. All right, so here we go. We're still on hard difficulty, I think, so we still got to... Make, time to pick up the pace, people. Make these rings in time. I got some scans of those ships. Should give me an advantage when we get to the station. We're coming up on the center of their operations. I think one more ring and we shall do it. We already got the ace accolade. Detecting Solanae energy signatures ahead. Ah, Solanae. Ugh. They give me the creeps. I guess we don't get another accolade. Oh well. Might be because I failed, actually. I didn't hit all of them correctly. I did miss that one in time. That sucks. Target the ships defending the station. Solar flares they use. Gosh. Somebody kill that thing, will ya? All these other ships around me and none none of them are taking out the solar gateways. Very smoothly. Weston, you're up. We'll keep them busy. On it. Iconian energy signature detected. Uh oh. Evasive maneuvers. Pattern Paris Delta 2. Andrew! Well, he's gone. We need to abort. We can't do this without Weston. I can do it. Andrew gave me a backup copy of his algorithms in case something happened. We're... We're falling back. Dad, I know you mean well, but... I have to do this. You know what will happen if the Solene can break through. We'll lose everything. Okay, Moral. You can be almost as stubborn as your mother, but I know when I'm beat. All right, people, you heard her. We're going in hot. Cover Morale's ship so she can finish this. Okay. We are Delta Flight, and we will not be stopped. Attack the Herald Dreadnought. We gotta assault the station while the shield the ship is doing whatever. We're getting there. Attack the dreadnought. And dreadnought again. Oh, there it is.
nodes left on the station. Take them out now. Last node. Destroy it, and we can take out the Dreadnought and finish this. Shields are offline. Destroy the Dreadnought. down. Hit him now! Destroy the station. Detecting a power surge! I have their main computer. They're still trying to start the conversion process, but their shields are completely down. Okay, let's blow up this thing and head home. We're being pulled in. Evasive maneuvers. Yee-haw! Well, I guess that's that. Oh, we dug it I out. I found something interesting in the computer system before the station blew. It's coordinates for another sphere. And this one looks to be very strategically important. It might even be a secondary hub for the Iconian Gateway Network. I grabbed everything on it I can find. I'll transmit the files to Captain Cogren at Alliance Command. Maybe he can get a team together to investigate. All right, acknowledged. It was a pleasure working with you, Lieutenant Commander. The station is destroyed, and we've completed our mission. But not without paying a price. Weston was a talented engineer and a damn fine pilot. He may not have wanted to be in Starfleet, but there was a time I didn't think I was Starfleet material either. Sometimes rebels make the best officers. We know our duty. We just have our own way of getting it done. Sometimes you have to break the rules to uphold the law? Exactly. Hmm. It's been a pleasure flying with you. Maybe we can do it again sometime before this thing ends. Consider yourself an honorary member of Delta Flight. Thank you, Captain Paris. Losing Weston is regrettable, but we needed a victory today. Thanks to you, we have one. Defeating a Herald Dreadnought is a significant achievement. Destroying their station and keeping the Solene locked in subspace is even more valuable. The number of ships and soldiers we have is finite. We cannot allow the Iconians to have a numerical advantage, as well as a technological one. I will examine the files Lieutenant Commander Paris managed to recover from the Herald computers. Perhaps a strike on this base she found will be our next move. All right, we get a whole bunch of stuff and a Polaric Modulator or the Neutronium. I've already got a Neutronium. So I am definitely going for the Polaric Modulator. Accolade complete from Paris with love. I like that. So that was a nice little mission. It's not too long. It's a, lo it's a little wordy, a little dialogue-y, but uh, not a terrible mission. Kind of fun. It introduced the whole pilot system to us. And now we can train a pi we can make a bridge officer, a pilot bridge officer with this qualification. Although I don't have a ship that can have pilot seating, but we could make an officer a, have those powers anyway. Now here's the unique item we got from this. This is a Polaric Modulator. Now this thing really helps with starship movement, turn rate, and speed and all that. Plus 5 inertia, plus 
plus 12% flight speed, plus 20% turn rate while in slipstream, but a plus 20% flight turn rate out of slipstream. Adds 7.5% of your weapon power to your engine power. So more engine power. So this thing makes you move, man. If you're a slow starship and you need to move better, this Polaric Modulator will help you. So will a Tachyonetic Converter, by the way. This with a Tachyonetic Converter and maybe an RCS and you'd be flying circles. You'd be in a, in a cruiser. You'd be flying circles around the escorts. Seriously, though, this is good. Even on an escort, um, this is good. This would help you to maneuver even better. And I want to put it on our escort. And I think I can. Let's see if I can move. We'll just get rid of this field generator, which is a maximum shield capacity for now. We'll get rid of it or put it aside. And see if I can put this one down here and then because this only goes in engineering consoles. Fortunately, this is not a universal console slot. This is just it just has to go in engineering. So we'll put that there. And now I have that. So we lost a little bit of shield capacity uh, by having this, but we're going to gain incredible movement speed and everything. It's going to make flying this escort just a breeze. And we can test that. We'll go to Soul Space right now and we'll test that out and you'll see it is better. I am thinking though there is another console in the future I do want to get and put on here and I know I'm probably going to want to put it in one of these science consoles. I don't know which mission provides it but it also has a shield capacity on it but it also has other things that are going to be universal like you are or useful like using your aux power to increase critical chance and severity. So it's a console I know I want to put. I'm, I might have to get rid of one of these things. Maybe the timeline stabilizer is finally going to have to go. I mean, we're only using its one ability anyway. We're not exactly using any of its bonuses at all because we don't have the other parts to it. And every now and then it comes in handy, but I could probably do without it, to be honest with you. So in the future, once I get that console on this ship, I think the timeline stabilizer is going to go bye-bye. I don't think it really will have a place on this ship anymore. But we'll see. We'll get there. I'll let you know what console that is when we get there. I'm not sure which mission it is that gives it, though. And I forgot exactly what it's called. Let's see. Is it House Peg? The Empire requires your assistance with a cool... It's not House Peg. It might be Time in a Bottle or Broken Circle or Butterfly. I don't know. It's one of them, but it's some kind of console and it does provide a shield capacity upgrade as well as more critical chance and critical severity based on your aux power and that is a very useful console for us as a tactical officer so anyway i'm, I'm looking forward to that console but we don't have it yet so anyway let's go to the soul system And I can show you how snappy this thing turns and moves with this console on. So here's full impulse. And check that out. Look how much faster I can turn. I mean, I'm whipping around so fast, my rear end is probably scraping the ground, you know. Like if I had tires on this thing, they'd be they'd be screeching right now. Because that's how fast I'm turning. So it increases your turn rate. It also increases your flight speed because it does increase your engine power. So now this ship is just incredibly maneuverable. And I can show you that difference by taking it on and off. So we'll go to stats and we will take this off. First of all, note my engine power is now 55. 55 without it. But when I put it on, my engine power is 64. That's a 9 increase. That's almost a plus 10 increase there just on engine power. So that is really cool. That really helps me move faster. But let's take it off and I'll show you what my turn rate is. So my turn rate while I'm moving is 35.4 as it is. That's pretty good. That ain't bad. That's escort level turning, no doubt about it. 
when I put this thing on though, 39.5, almost a 40 degree a second turn. That's the increase. So here, let's, let's, let's take it off and do another comparison. Here it is with it off. And here I, here I am turning. Here I am turning. So that's how long it takes to make a complete circle or revolution around without it. And now we put it on. And it's that much faster. I think my bonus defense also went up. Let's see. So my defense is 85% without it. Or with it. And without it, I'm not sure if it's going to change. Because I think defense is based on speed. So if I'm flying slower... I guess it doesn't affect defense. I thought it, I thought it might, but I guess not. Oh well, it doesn't affect defense, but it still gives me a really good turn rate. Oh, it's my flight speed. Flight speed is 43.41 with it. 39, 37.76 without it. And the inertia goes down too. So all of that from 37 flight speed to a 43 flight speed That's where that goes. So my flight speed and turn rate are increased. So I'm gonna keep this console on. I do want, I do like it on escorts. It's very nice. So I'm gonna keep that. These are probably how I'm just gonna keep all of my engineering consoles. This is probably my final engineering console setup right here. I just need to upgrade each thing, you know, to epic level, optimally epic, epic level. But at least, you know, at least all Mark 14 would be nice. So that is that. Now for the science consoles, like I said, I'll probably get rid of the timeline stabilizer and put that other console once I get it here because that's going to help me do more damage as well as give me back some shield capacity that I lost from this one. And then I'm just going to keep all these tactical consoles, of course, Tetrion, uh, Tetrion pulse generators, and I'll just keep, you know, improving the level. Obviously, I want all Mark 14, you know, very rare, ultra rare, epic, whatever, you know, on all these. So I'll just keep upgrading those as well, and then that will pr pretty much be my final console setup. Once I get this other console that I'm looking forward to, that'll probably be my final console setup on here. It'll just be a matter of upgrading everything. Of course, everything up here will change because I'm going to get the whole, you know, Iconian space set. I'm going to probably keep this Crinum Torpedo. I really like it. Was the... Um, no, I was thinking the Crinum Torpedo is part of a set. Yeah, it is part of a set itself, but I don't have any of the other stuff either for it. And, um, yeah, that's it. I like this console. I'm going to keep it. All right. Oh, I'm at the end of the uh, universe, apparently. I made it all the way out here to the end of the universe. Isn't that something? Okay, everybody. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.